The University Museum at Indiana University of Pennsylvania is proud to present an exhibition featuring paintings by IUP Professor Emeritus Ned Wirt. This exhibition represents an outstanding 60 plus year career as an artist, mentor, and educator. Ned Wirt has influenced thousands of students during his award winning career as a high school educator in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania and as a faculty member at IUP. Paintings in this exhibit are from the artist's personal collection and the University Museum's permanent collection, in addition to others generously on loan from private collections. In his own words, Ned Wirt tells us a little more about himself, his career as an educator and award-winning artist, how his direction as an artist got its start, where he finds inspiration for each of his paintings, and how his vision of those paintings has evolved through the years. Hello, I'm Ned Wirt. I'm originally from Millersburg, Pennsylvania, which is just on the outskirts somewhat of Harrisburg. I grew up in a town that was pretty much supported of the arts, and uh, for that reason, and it still is, for that reason, I sort of attached myself to art. Actually, it was about third grade when an art teacher held up my painting of Donald Duck and said, look at this, Ned did this. And at that point, they said to my parents, he should go into art, and I did. But I think probably from maybe when I was in seventh grade, when I said to my dad, do you care if I become an art teacher? And he said, no, you're not gonna make very much money, but I think you ought to do that. And so I went to IUP and became um, an art education major. And then I, I taught public school for 12 years in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, and then came to IUP and taught for 18 years. I started painting professionally in 1968. And that was that followed a sabbatical year in Europe, and then I, where I had a, a, my first solo exhibition. And then after I came back to the United States, I continued to paint professionally, and and to enter juried exhibitions, and at the same time to encourage my students, even though they were still students, usually grad students to also become involved with the professional world of art. The art continued for me after my first encounter with the third grade teacher. And, and as typical in a junior and senior high, um, I was pretty naive about what the art was like. I was a realistic artist, and it was quite some time until before I became an abstract painter. That story goes that I was very strongly influenced by a professor at IUP who taught watercolor and was pretty much, he tried to convince us that we all had to be watercolor painters too. When I got to my second course at IUP, that instructor said, your watercolors are mediocre and it's time for you to uh, continue with abstract painting your work is much more exciting, it involves more of your own opinions, and it, that's the route you should take. And so I gave up watercolor, except as little exercises in between, um, or watercolor is much more easy to travel with. So if I was making any kind of a travel to another country or wherever, I took watercolors along but then very often those watercolors became the, the germ for abstract paintings. Part of, part of my responsibility as a teacher of painting, I always felt it was important for me to find the strength of that student and, or that young artist. And so therefore, um, I've probably, I may have sent some people in the wrong direction, but you see that that artist soon finds out that that was not the direction to go. My own decision to continue in abstract work 
um, all stems from the fact that I was a realistic painter first. So as I continue the abstraction, first of all, my definition of abstraction is that you take a realistic idea and abstract it. And for instance, I work with a sketchbook and these sketches are done on site during travels. And if I don't have a sketchbook, I work with a camera. And those ideas develop into abstract paintings, but they were realism in the first place. So I think it's important that you communicate an idea to the person who's going to look at the painting. And for that reason, I give them titles. Sometimes the title has something to do with where the idea came from, but other times it does not. And so therefore, I always adapt a realistic idea into abstraction, which is my definition of what abstraction is. I have always been, in, in fact, in the exhibition at the museum right now, I have gotten two letters from people that say, boy, for a gloomy day, your painting certain bright, certainly brightened up my outlook for the rest of the day. I've always been, I've always been judged by my color, um, moreover than the structure within the painting or the composition. Um, there's a, a joke among my friends that I use too much red but I like it, and I was taught by a man by the name of Dr. Orville Kipp, a very familiar name at IUP, and he had two doctorates in color theory, and he made sure that we understood color, um, how to mix it and how to use it, and for that reason, um, color is just, you know, it's one of the main uh, ingredients in my work, and maybe that's what draws me to the canvas all the time. I, I buy a lot of red paint. I often think about what is the next part of my career and what are my influences after I'm gone. You know, how will my art remain? It's important to me that it does. Um, I'm in several museum collections. I'm represented in 28 states, five foreign countries, and I've taught 5,000 or more students. And that will probably be what is remembered about me. I'm not famous, but I am well known. For more information on this and other museum events, please contact the IUP Department of Art and Design at 724-357-2530 or email museum-info at iup.edu.